Good morning. This is Lola Wrist with LolaWrist.com and we're trying a second tie. First time Facebook was being weird, so let's try it again. And we'll get going here. Some people can have their Facebook up started before they start their video, and I cannot. For some reason, I can't locate it once it gets going. So here it is once it gets going so and again it's not going to allow comments so we're going to change it one more time and then we're going to get started no matter what Okay, so if you are with me today, I am not able to see comments. So I'm gonna have to do without the comments today. And that's part of the problem, it changes things right and left. So let me go ahead and turn this down and get going. So we're gonna do two techniques today, neither one that I feel overly the most comfortable with. Only, it's not that they're hard, I just don't use them. It's not, any other reason then, I just don't use them that often. So, the, com the techniques we're gonna do are watercolor, and we're also going to do heat embossing. And lots and lots of people do heat embossing. It's just not something I do. I'm uh, not into messy. Messy doesn't do much for me. So I always envision myself blowing the powder of my heat embossing everywhere and making it absolutely a mess. So, those of you, I, I now see comments are coming through. Let me see if I can open them. I know your comments are there. I see them, but I can't read them. I see, com I see that people are making comments and the number is going up, but I can't read them, guys. So I'm gonna have to read them afterwards, and I apologize, it's just the way it is. Facebook, I think they deliberately do this, kind of like Walmart, when you go into Walmart and they move things around, and you're like, why? Why? We knew where everything was. It's kind of like that with Facebook, they move things around. So I wanted to do something springy. I'm, I'm getting to that point where I'm tired of the Christmas cards, I've got them all made now, and I've been designing, but I've been designing since July. So I'm ready to look at some different things. This is called Frame Florets. Frame Florets is going to be in the spring catalog when it comes out the beginning of January, but it's already available. They made an early um, release of that and the, the dies that coordinate, and the dies are really, really pretty. They have some beautiful pieces here with the oval that cuts the little tiny hearts all the way through the paper. Um, another oval that has a ribbed, and then this um, ornate frame kind of makes me think of Victorian. And along with that, they have some dies that coordinate with the flowers. For example, this one here coordinates with this on the stamp set. Uh, I'm not sure that all of them coordinate. Let's see. Some of them coordinate with paper. Bye, hon. Bye. Be careful. He's off to get his mom. She's been in Iowa. I, and I'm, I'm probably wrong. They probably all coordinate with the stamp set, but they didn't coordinate with the paper. Okay? So there's multiple choices there. And the paper is only available until it's sold out. Once it's sold out, it's gone. So this is the set I'm gonna play with today. And we're gonna play with it with heat embossing and with watercoloring. And um, we're, we're just gonna see what happens. We'll, we'll see where we go with it. So we're gonna start off with fresh freesia. And then I have a piece of silver, which is four by five and a quarter. 
And then we have a piece of DSP. And this is from the Butterfly DSP. That was not one that I really liked, but I like the reverse sides of it. I like little tiny patterns. I'm a paper person. I love paper, isn't that pretty? So this is gonna be the basis of my card. And then we're gonna add a, another piece of silver and a piece of watercolor paper, like so. And that will be the focal point of our card. So I'm gonna go on ahead and I'm gonna set this aside for now. In fact, let's go on ahead and put this much together. Let's get this on here. The more I have together, the less chances I have of making a mistake. Um, if you are just now coming in, I've already commented that I cannot, for some reason, I'm not capable of reading comments at this point. I will go back and read them, but um, I can't I can't pull them up on my Facebook. I don't know why. So, all right. So, I know that my card is eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. And then I cut the silver at four by five and a quarter. And I deliberately cut that at four because if I cut it at four, I can get six pieces out of that 12 by 12. If I cut it like I normally like and make it four and an eighth, I get four pieces. So, you know, you have to kind of think about that. That paper is silver paper is kind of expensive. You don't want to max your point to the, you know, max yourself out with your cutting that you only get a minimum number. So there's that. And then we're going to start with this watercolor. But while I'm at it, I'm going to go, if you'll give me just a sec, I'm going to step aside here and get a tape runner. start with the watercolor and get that done and let's get rid of this embossing powder that I will mess up. We're going to start with the aqua painters. I They used to call them, I don't know, they called them something different and I think you only got two. Now we get three. You have one that has a thicker tip, a brush. You have one that has a thinner tip brush and then you have the flat bristled brush and that's the one I'm going to use for the background. They also have a chamber that allows water to be in here. I don't know if you can see if the air, pup, air bubble or not. I have water in it and they're kind of tricky so you have to turn them here to get them unscrewed and all that but I also like to start with a little more water so I'm going to do that and I'm gonna get my inks first. So we're gonna start with four different inks. We're gonna start with, let's see if I can get that squeezed in there. Orchid Oasis, good deal. Oops, right the wrong way. Want the lid. Orchid Oasis, Highland Heather. By squeezing it ever so carefully, I can get some of that ink and this one is broken. I need to replace this one. I can get some of this ink on the lid. And again, let me go a little more. The old ink pads were so much easier to do this with. And if we're gonna go with what we got. And I didn't get hardly any more, but we're gonna go with it. Then we have Balmy Blue. Another option I could have had was have a um, um, a block out here and use some reinkers. I could have done that too. So this one is fresh freesia. That didn't pull up at all. A little. All right. Okay. So I'll pull that back a little so you guys can have a little more to see. So there's my inks. And I'm gonna pull this paper down a little more. And I'm gonna take my 
water painter and I cut a piece of water paper, watercolor paper. It's fluid, I think, what did they call it? Fluid 100. And it is, see the potential of making a mess here is gonna happen. Three and a quarter by four and a half. Three and a quarter by four and a half. And what I'm gonna do is just take that water and I have a little dish off to the side here because I'd like a little more water than what I get out of the bristles when I first start. And I want the paper good and wet. Make sure it's good and wet. And then I'm gonna flip it. If I water it on both sides, it actually will lay better and it will stay in one spot. I don't know if you learned that trick or not before. Uh, Melissa from Melissa Kerman taught us that and I had not, because I don't do that much watercoloring, I had never done it. Okay, so this is a side I want pretty wet. Okay, and I'm gonna start with my fresh freesia and I'm just gonna start laying some color in here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to my Highland Heather and I'm just laying in some blocks of color. I'm gonna go with my balmy blue and I'm kind of allowing them to, to blend. I'm not really clearing off the brush because I want them to kind of fade together and blend anyway. Okay, I'm gonna put a little more water down through that. I can squeeze and by squeezing on the bristle holder, it's supposed to drop, there it comes, drop some more paint or water down, okay? So I don't know how many of you guys do do watercolor. Again, like I said, it's not something I do. And I certainly, oh Lord, I can't imagine doing this for a, a um, doing multiples of this. This is, that'd drive me nuts. All right. So I'm gonna try to pick up a little more by doing that that I probably shouldn't do and touch in the corner of my ink pad, but I want a little more of that color, fresh freesia. Okay, so there's my coloring. Can you see it? And I'm gonna come back in and I'm just gonna wet it down a little more and just kind of bleed everything out and blend it together. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna close it up. So this was Orchid Oasis was my colors. And then my Fresh Freesia. Oops, my Balmy Blue and my Highland Heather that is broken and I need to replace there. Okay, so there's what we got. i clean my brush. And it is ready to go for the next time I wanna use it. All right, okay. So now I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna cover that heat powder, embossing powder thing back there. I'm gonna take my heat tool and I'm gonna dry it. And we're gonna speed this process up a little bit. So I'm gonna dry it. But remember, I wet both sides, so after I dry it, I have to go back and do the other side, too. It also lays flat better when it is um, wet on both sides. I think that's about right, but let me go this way. All right, so let's go back and look at our colors again. So we've got um, Fresh Freesia. We have some balmy blue going through here. 
We have some Highland Heather in places, and we have Orchid Oasis. So it's all just shades of blue, periwinkle, that kind of, or in purples, purples and periwinkles more so, okay? All right, now, this is the messy, the other messy part. So we got made it through one, and I haven't made a mess yet. So let's see if we can make it through this one. Okay, so we're going to start with Versamark. And we're going to use Versamark in our framed florette images. And I'm going to take just a couple of the images. I'm going to take the leaf one. And I'm going to put the leaf on it. If you're using Versamark, it's kind of hard to see. But when I put the embossing powder on it, it will really take off. And what I've done is just kind of go into the corner areas and lay some images, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go back now to this tray. This is my embossing powder. And I'm gonna put some embossing powder here. I did not worry about doing the um, uh, the little bag piece that we use. I don't even think I know what the, off the top of my head. And you guys can tell me, but it won't matter. I won't be able to see it. So um, embossing buddy, that's what it is. Somebody sent me the words in my head. All right. But we're not done. We're gonna go on ahead and I put the powder on. I'm gonna go on ahead and emboss some more. And I'm this time I'm gonna use the flower, but I have to be very, very careful that I don't mess up my paper and knock any of the embossing powder off. So I'm gonna fill up and fill in. Okay, let's see what we got going. I did not do any there. So this is like almost making a watercolor DSP, decorative paper background. Okay. And then we have another little image here. This is a smaller flower. So let me put it in. One more. Okay, now I'm starting to lose places to hold it because I don't want to lose the embossing powder that's already on it and knock it free. Okay, we're going to go one more. We're going to try to get the um, a few leaves in here tip. All right, that's it. Let's see what we got now. We added a few little leaf tips to fill in. And I do have the tweezers are coming out here in a minute. I just didn't want to bend the paper right now with them. All right. Hmm. We may want to add one more flower. Let me see. Let's add one more flower just or a little more stem. Let's do that. So 
so Pam has been really, really sick. I She was feeling better yesterday. She made it to church. See, there's that potential of me making a mess, flipping it everywhere. So we are hopeful to be back this week. However, I will tell you that things are getting really tricky at this point in the time in our our December between classes and we've added on um, Advent services on Wednesday night. And then we did a, um, we have a, a group going with a Advent group on Thursday nights. Our nights are getting hard to find a night that's free. So I'm hoping that we can be here Thursday, Wednesday night after church, but we'll see. So it may be 8, 8.30 or so. All right, so I've got all of that on here. And I I did it in pieces. If you remember, I, I started first with the stem, and then I put the powder on it so I saw where it was at, and then kept adding and building. So here we go. Time for the pretty. So I'm aiming it right here. If you can see, the embossing is going. And it just changes that powder. It melts that powder into a solid image of um, outlined image of silver embossing. It's just beautiful. And I love that background in the back of it, just kind of showing through the leaves and everything. So we add more here and get this done. And I, let me double check it. I believe it all looks good. Oh, I made it through both of them so far without making a mess. So can you see the shimmer on that? Can you see the shine on that silver? If I angle it towards the light, I think you can really see it. That's beautiful. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so, I'm going to take this. And because that has kind of been warped with water, and then it's also been warped with the heating tool, I'm going to go on ahead and um, put it down with tear and tape for just um, a little more assurance. So, let me come in here and take my tear and tape. Okay. And a little more. And down here. Okay. Oh, and today I think is an exciting day for Pam's family because I believe the grandbaby, they are taking Mama to the hospital today and inducing her. So I'm thinking that we should have a baby born later today. So I got all excited last week. I had a friend send me a text and said, hey, word, word is that on Facebook that Brittany's going to be induced today. And I was like, oh, okay. So I waited for Pam to contact me, and she didn't, and she didn't, and she didn't. And I'm like, and well. So I reached out to her. I said, Pam, Brittany got her baby here yet? And she's like, uh, not that I know of. 
And I said, well, I must have misunderstood. I understood that Brittany was being induced today. And Pam comes back and says, well, I don't know that that's true. I've not heard it. And about that time, my husband, the smart guy with the dinghy wife, says to me, who sent you that text? And I said, well, my friend Wanda. And he said, Loa, you and Wanda text back all the time, back and forth about Brittany Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes' wife, not Brittany Cosby. I was like, oh my gosh. I did. I messed that up. Look at this. Is that not beautiful? Oh my gosh. I'm trying to see if you can get the picture of this. Maybe if I turn the light off. No. Oh, it's me. It's me angling my, uh, my laptop. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh. Okay. So we're going to put this down. And this I can go on ahead and put down with this kind of tape runner. Put an extra piece or two there. I am not a big bling girl, but I sure am foil paper. I love foil. Love, 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 love foil. Okay. So we're going to put a little sheer ribbon on there. If I have my scissors. Ah, there they are. So let me kind of look and see how I'm going to do this. Because we're going to put an oval in the middle here. So I'm going to lose some of my image. But I knew that when I put it in, but I wanted to make sure I had every place, every place possibly covered that I could. So, and otherwise it was just fun putting and adding more images. Okay. All right. So let's go on ahead and take this ribbon. And I'm just gonna take some tape runner. And I wasn't gonna put it there. I'm gonna use dimensionals. So I put that runner down for not much. I'm just gonna put dimensionals. This one is dimensionals. I never see straight. I can live with that. Okay, so let's get rid of some of this excess that I didn't need after all. And then we're gonna take our dimensionals And we're going to start laying them on here. And I'm going to lay them pretty good because I've got that watercolor image. And sometimes even the foil will roll. So I want to make sure this is good and anchored. So I'm going to be more liberal with the amount of dimensionals that I use than I normally am. Normally, I would put like six on this piece. I do one, two, three, four, five, six more in the middle. But we're gonna be a little more liberal instead of frugal. I'm gonna put that ribbon down. I've got them both down with a piece of adhesive of dimensional. So do you guys do a lot of watercoloring? I've always wanted to try the lineless, the no line watercoloring, but yeah, that means you gotta be brave enough to try. And I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna mess it up. And I hate to mess stuff up. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna put this here. Oh gosh, this is beautiful. Ah, oh, I love that background paper too, that one with the butterfly. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, so now we're going to stamp a little. 
<clears throat> and I, I'm gonna go on ahead and take a moment to clean my stamps. Even though I use Versamark on them, you can leave the Versamark on it. There are, there are people out there that will actually condition their stamps by using Versamark. But I used them for some other colors last night and I wanna make sure that I have that all off. I'd hate to get to the point where I screwed it up with this and have that beautiful background and a messed up oval. So I took that oval image that they had in the stamp set of the die set, this one here that has the ribbed edges around and it actually cuts a separate one. So then I cut it again with the white so that I got two images. So let's go on ahead and do this much. And we're gonna use the Fresh Freesia. And we're gonna take the greeting that says for a special person on a special day. And I'm so bad about lining that up right. Okay, and then we're gonna take the Highland Heather flower and we're gonna put the flowers on, but we're gonna step up, stamp them off. In fact, I don't, I want the little one here. Okay. And we're gonna take the leaf and we're gonna stamp it off to get rid of that real heavy color. That doesn't look like it's stamped off well, so let's go back. All right. And a little more. Okay. And I'm gonna turn this over. I'm gonna fit this in. And I want it to stay in there, centered. I could tape it, or I'm just gonna go on ahead and use my dimensionals if I can find them. I'm just gonna overlap dimensional and oval. And I'm only gonna do about three of them because I wanna make sure I got it before I've taped it all the way around and then I'm off-centered. Every once in a while, I'll get off-centered. Okay, that'll work. And we are about done. Okay, I've got it good and attached now. And I'll go in and put a couple here in the middle to support. And I don't even have to take them all off. If I didn't want to, I wouldn't have to take them all off. I can take just some of them off. I'll probably not even take the two in the middle off. So are you a big dimensional person, like the regular size or the mini? The regular or the mini? I am a regular size. I much rather have the regular size. I'm gonna, ang I'm gonna take it over a little ways over this way. Make sure I had it up the right way. We're gonna tie a bow on the end because it's pretty enough. It needs that little bow. I prefer the, the regular size and, and Pam prefers the other size. I prefer the big size. And I don't even think I have a pair, a set of the black ones at all. Maybe I ought to. Usually I can go right under, but this ribbon is pointed enough, it won't allow that. It's sheer enough, it's going through the ribbon. There, there we go. Okay. So it's kind of a monochromatic card with silver embossing and watercolor background. I'm gonna play with the bow here a little bit. I don't like that, so let's go down and do it again. 
just excited for the Cosby family. I can't wait to see. We have a grandbaby coming in um, January, and we're just ready to meet the little boy. We have never had, we don't have a grandson. This is a real exciting time for us that we're going to get a grandbaby boy, a little boy. All right, I'll cut a little more off of this. All right, and a little bit of bling, not much. So what I'm gonna do is take the 2022-23 opal rounds, and I'm just gonna get a couple of these on here for the centers of the flower. And another little one for up here. And guys, there's my card for the day. I love it. I think that turned out so great. And I love the silver embossing. Gonna have to do that heat embossing a lot more. And I love the watercolor image. If you haven't tried the watercolor, don't be afraid like me and just keep saying, no, 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 I'm not gonna try it. Just pull it out and start playing with it. It's beautiful. And always look at your backs of your paper, your DSP. I didn't care for that butterfly set, but the backside is always a very simple um, pattern that allows for so many possibilities. And that's where I got that piece. I love this. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll read your comments. Let me know what you think. And um, yeah, let me know if you like mini or, or regular dimensional. I, I just personally prefer those regular size. So anyhow, take care. God bless. And we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.